Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? Bet my son will be in here in just a minute because my husband went somewhere. Oh, but until he does, we will uh, talk. Okay, so today, today, my words were walk in obedience. And I don't know whether I have done this lesson or not. Uh, if so, I'm going to do it a little bit differently because it's going to be kind of like um, what I've been thinking about last night since a uh, youth Bible study where we talked about the Israelites and, and numbers and how they would follow God and then they would be disobedient and they would grumble then they would I mean that's that's most of the Old Testament is people that were either being obedient to God or not and suffering the consequences because when we are not obedient to God, there are consequences that we suffer. And so I thought we would talk about that tonight. And what is so funny is that I so wanted to skip tonight. And that is not being obedient. So it's funny how our obedience gets tested. You know, um, like when we need to be obedient, um, we get tested. We get tested on that obedience. So I got tested twice today because I could have said, hey, I'm tired. I ate fried catfish today. <laughs> I ate so much. I'm miserable. Uh, but that's not what God wants. He wants us to be obedient. So we need to be obedient. So Let's jump into some prayer, and then we will do some scriptures. Oops. Oh, I had my little cord hanging up there so I could read easily. And But we're going to pray first. So anyway, maybe just be thinking about obedience. Um, are you obedient to God? Are you obedient to everything that God tells you to do? God tells me to do some things that to me are like, I don't want to, and it doesn't make sense to me. Let me make sure my volume's up. It wasn't. Um, it doesn't make sense to me, and I don't want to do it. Um, but when I push through and I do it anyway, whether I want to do it or not, there are always blessings. I have found that if I will be obedient, I will be blessed. And I will get confirmation that I did the right thing, that I chose the right thing, that I was led to the right thing. So, um, yeah, that's important to God. Obedience is important to God. God destroyed a whole entire world because of disobedience and sin. So obedience is an important thing to God. It's a very important. Okay, well, let's jump into some prayer. Let's pray. God, we just thank you, and we just praise you, God. You are on your throne, and you are in control, God. And we know that we can trust you with everything that we have, God. That you will lay everything out for us. God, we thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our protector, our provider, our shelter in the storm. We thank you for being our refuge and our strength. God, there is no God like you. You are magnificent and powerful and mighty. You are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness. There is no sin. There is nothing hidden from you. You know all hearts and minds, God. You know all details of all situations. You know all the outcomes. You know all the solutions, God. So we need to put our trust in you. You are loving and kind and compassionate and faithful. And you are forgiving, God. And you are patient. And you want none, none that you've created to perish, God. But you also give us free will to choose, God. We can choose to be obedient or not to be obedient, to choose Jesus as our Savior or not to choose Jesus as our Savior. And there are consequences. 
There are blessings if we choose and consequences if we don't. So God, we just thank you. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for calling us as your children. And we love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. God, we pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, God, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they can be saved. We pray that you would soften their hearts. We pray for the prodigals, God. We pray that they would return to you, that they would repent, that they would let you reconcile the relationship between you and them. God, we pray for all the disasters, the wars, the rumors of wars, God. We pray for peace. We pray for peace through Jesus, not through a false um, treaty or anything, but just through Jesus. We pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray, God, that you would um, give them peace, comfort, and strength. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, well, let's, let's read what I put. And this song is not called Obedient, but what it is called is The Only King Forever. Only King Forever by Seventh Time Down. We did this a couple of weeks ago at Youth, and I just loved this song. I forgot that I loved it. Um, there's so many Christian musics, musics and music, and there are so many types and this is kind of a more upbeat song. Uh, if you would like, go and listen to it later, and uh, I think you'll agree with me. It's just it's so good. So this song and message popped into my head today by Seventh Time Down. And it did. It just, like, parts of this song popped into my head. Uh, you are the only king forever. Uh, I don't remember the rest that popped into my head. So, uh, we learned about rebellion and obedience in Numbers last night. That's what we talked about. And we talked about um, heaven, what heaven will be like, and who will be there. And we just, you know, we had a good discussion, a good small group discussion. And um, it just really got me thinking about God woke me up with these three words, walk in obedience. So, um, Jesus is the only king forever. Uh, the only king that I want to follow in obedience. He is the only king. And it is a challenge to walk in obedience every day, but I do try. It seems like every day we are tested to do the right thing. Like today, I was at the drugstore and God said, buy a paper. So I did. <laughs> I never read papers and was struggling to read the articles because I hear most of what I take in news-wise. I hear it on YouTube. That's where I get my news. And I just get little snippets. I don't read whole articles. So that was quite a struggle. And I don't know. I still don't know why. I still don't know why he wanted me to buy that paper. But it's not my job to figure out why. It is my job to be obedient. So I was obedient. It was only a dollar. I mean, like, it's no big deal. So just walk in obedience, following King Jesus to heaven. Sounds easy, right? It is challenging at times because God wants us to trust him fully, no matter what it costs us. Sometimes it costs us some humiliation, sometimes it costs us um, monetarily, no, I'm not talking about the dollar, uh, sometimes it costs us to be obedient to God, but Jesus trusts God fully. He even died for the entire world because Jesus is obedient no matter what the cost. He paid it all. And now he reigns victorious as the only king forever. Is Jesus your personally, your personal only king forever? He loves you and wants to be. Come as you are. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven. 
and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3, 16 through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. So salvation is most important, and that is <clears throat> another form of obedience, is that we trust that Jesus is who God's Word says He is, and we trust that He will is our true Savior, and we trust that He died for us, and we trust that He was buried, and we trust that He rose again, and we trust that he ascended to God and said that he will come back, that he will come and get us. So that is what we trust. And that is who we trust. And that is why we can be obedient because Jesus is trustworthy. Okay, let's read some scriptures. Um, let's start with Isaiah. I did have time to number these today while I was on the phone with my friend. So that's always a good deal for me because I'm not having to flip back and forth unless I didn't, <clears throat> excuse me, unless I didn't number them correctly. Hang on a second. I went to Chicken E today and got me a sweet tea. But now I'm drinking water out of it. <clears throat> okay, Isaiah 1, 19 says this. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with a sword, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. How is the faithful city become a harlot? It is. It was full of judgment, righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. Wow. That's, that's powerful. That's how is the faithful city become a harlot. It was full of judgment, righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. You know, there is a lot of evil right now, a lot. But if we are willing to be obedient, we shall eat the good of the land. I'm taking that as blessings. Blessings will come. Because food and eating, that's a blessing. So blessings will come if ye be willing and obedient. So we need to, in order to be obedient, we have to be willing. We have to be, sometimes we have to be humbled. Sometimes we have to go outside of our comfort zone to do something that God is calling us to do. And, you know, just like this, I do not feel qualified to do this at all. What I do, I don't feel qualified. I don't feel like I am the very best, so please don't ever think that of me. Because I know there are people that I watch on YouTube that are so much better at this than I am. But what I do is I share God's Word. I share God's word, but anybody could do this. Anybody could get on here and do this. You know, I am not great at it. But I am willing and I'm obedient to the call. This is part of my call, is to share God's word and the gospel of Jesus. So those are my two main things that I focus in on is sharing God's word. So that's why we always do scripture, because I'm always going to share God's word, because it is much more powerful than anything that I could say. Anything. God's word is much more powerful. Okay, so Luke 6.46.
Okay, Luke 6, 46 says, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings, and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built an house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood rose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. So Jesus is our rock. He is the foundation that we want to build our life on. We want to build our life, our house, on the rock. That way it will stand firm. We want to do the things that Jesus is telling us that we need to do. And on the flip side, But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of, ruin of that house was great. So if we don't build our lives on the foundation of Jesus, if we are not being obedient to what God wants us to do and asks us to do, then our lives are going, uh, the fall of our life is going to be great. So the people out there that you see that are not doing what God wants them to do are doing exactly the opposite of what God wants them to do, then their blessings, they're not, they're missing out on blessings because blessings come with obedience. So if they're not being obedient, then they're not getting blessed by God. So, I would rather be obedient and be blessed by God than to have my life fall apart because it's not built on the rock, the solid rock of Jesus. That's a song too. I'm sorry, I, well, I'm not going to apologize. I speak in music lyrics sometimes because they pop into my head. Um... I was thinking about the rock won't move and uh, the solid rock of Jesus. That's one of the lines, the solid rock of Jesus. So I'm not going to apologize for speaking in lyrics sometimes because they pop into my head and lyrics are scripture a lot of times. A lot of times the lyrics of a song you can tie back to a scripture. So it's just another way of speaking more of God's word. Okay, so the third one is John fourteen fifteen. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. So he's talking about the Holy Spirit. He's talking about that he is going to leave, but he is going to leave with them the Holy Spirit. Okay. So if we love God, we're going to keep his commandments. If we love Jesus, we're going to do what Jesus has asked us to do, which is love God with your whole heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength, and to love people. And this is the way I look at the commandments. If I love God, if I really love God, if I respect God for who he is, I am not going to break his commandments because I have a reverent fear of God and I don't want to break his commandments but if I don't love him it doesn't matter and if I love other people I am not gonna wrong them I'm gonna love them so if we love God we're gonna keep his commandments we're gonna do what he says 
and if we love people, we're going to do right things towards people. We're going to be caring and compassionate and loving. Okay, so let's move on to Acts 5.29. And anytime y'all want to put something in the comments about, hey, I really like this verse and I think this would have gone good with the lesson, I will not get offended. I will not block you. Uh, you are entitled to your opinion here. You are welcome to have your opinion here. Um, I don't want you to ever feel like you're shut out. I do this because I feel like God is going to bring people that need the message of the day. Whatever the message is, it is not my message. It is from God. These words every day, these songs that pop into my head are from God. They. It usually starts before I even hit the floor getting out of bed. I have these thoughts of what, what, you know, he wants me to speak about. And the Holy Spirit, more times than not, takes me exactly where I need to go for the right scriptures. Okay, so Acts 5.29 says this. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. Men, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins and we are his witnesses of these things and so is so is also the Holy Ghost whom God hath given to them that obey him when they heard that they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them then stood there up one in the council a Pharisee named Gamaliel a doctor of the law had in reputation among all the people and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space and said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up Theodos, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about four hundred, joined themselves, who was slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. After this, man rose up, Judas of Galilee, in the days of the taxing, and drew away much people after him. He also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men, and let them alone. For if this counsel of this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, sometimes being a Christian comes at a cost. Sometimes obedience comes at a cost. They were obedient. This is not their first beating that they got. They commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy, <laughs> that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for the name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. They did not stop. They were obedient. And there is a scripture in here too where they get beat and they say, we cannot help but teach and preach the name of Jesus. I think it is maybe in Acts 12 is where I'm thinking. And why I say that is because... Um, 
Because we had a scripture for YEC one year, and that was the scripture that we can't, I think the, the theme was speak out, and it's like we cannot help but teach and preach the name of Jesus Christ. It may be the one, I don't know. I don't know where it is. I don't know. Hey, if you know, put it in the comments, okay? Because I thought it was Acts 12, but it apparently is not. But they, they got beaten for preaching and teaching more than once, several times. Did they get in trouble for it? And of course, you know that Paul, Paul was all the time. Paul was all the time in prison writing letters. And I think it was Peter. It was Peter and somebody else. It might have been Paul and Barnabas. I wish I could find it. Huh. Well, maybe I can look for it tomorrow. I just happened to think about it. We were in Acts, so I thought, oh, maybe I can find it. Okay, I cannot. Okay, well, we will move on, and maybe I will look for that tomorrow, and maybe that will be the first verse that we do tomorrow. I don't know. If somebody puts it in the comments, that would save me a lot of time, but... I can look it up. I don't mind. Okay, 1 John 3.24 John 3.24 says, And he that keepeth his commandments dwell in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us, by the Spirit which He hath given us. So we need to keep the commandments of God. And what, what Jesus said was, love God and love one another. But like I explained to you, if you really love God, you're not going to break His commandments because you don't want to disappoint Him. You want to be obedient. You don't want to be rebellious. Or I don't want to be rebellious. I want to be obedient. Um, okay, what is the next one? 1 John 5, 3. 1 John 5, 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. You know, and that is something else, too. I'm going to start back on 5, 1, but that is something else, too, that brings to my mind. A lot of people think that God does not want them to have fun, but it is not true. What happens is that sin is a bondage, and sin comes with hurt and brokenness and can come with physical pain. So God doesn't want us to break his commandments, wants us to be obedient to him for our protection. He wants to protect us. He wants us to have the best life ever and make the best decisions ever and we can't do it when we're in bondage to sin. We cannot. We are going to let that sin, that sin becomes our God. And we, we live and we do for that sin. We do not do for God. We are doing for sin. And so that is why God wants us to be obedient because he wants to protect us. In our obedience, our willingness to be obedient, we will be protected by God. Now, if we go over and we do our own thing, and we go, hey, God, I don't need you, then we don't have God's protection. We are not under God's protection at all. Okay, so let's read starting with five, uh, 1 John 5. Uh, one. I'm going to start in one. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him that begat 
loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. His commandments are not mean meant to spoil our fun. His commandments are meant for protection. For what so like okay. Like uh I don't want to keep these commandments. I don't, you know, it's just, I don't want to do it. You know, well, you're not doing it because you want to. You're doing it for God. You're doing it in obedience to God. So that's why you're keeping the commandments. Not because it's what you want or what you don't want. It's that God is greater than you are and he created you for a plan and purpose. And part of this fulfilling this plan and purpose in your life is being obedient to him being willing to do the things that he is asking you to do okay for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith Jesus has overcome the world Jesus has already won the evil out there is they're spinning their wheels because they will be defeated and they will be defeated greatly. And if you don't believe me, read Revelation. Read Revelation or look what I got in the mail today. I did not ask for this. This came to me free of charge. And one of the things in here God blessed America in past tense because people if you don't see that things are not right I'm 61 things have never never been like this in my lifetime ever so people ask me well what do we do what do we do about the pandemic I don't know I'm not old enough to have lived through the Spanish flu I don't know I don't know what we should do, you know, but God does. He has a plan. That's why we trust him. That's why we're obedient. That's why we keep his commandments. Okay, this is he that came by water and blood, even by Jesus, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. It is the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, Ghost, and these three are one. Now that is the Trinity. He's talking about the Trinity. The Word is Jesus. Because over here, or it may be John, it is in John, it's in John 1, I think. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. That's Jesus. Jesus is the Word. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning. All things were made by Him, that is God. Without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. Now that's talking about John the Baptist, but John the Baptist was the precursor to Jesus. So John the Baptist, which also was Jesus' cousin, um, he, he hit the scene first, baptizing and saving people. But then Jesus took over, and his ministry was to, was really so much more because it was miracles and saving people and raising the dead and turning water to wine and you know he did a lot more than John but John led the way John led the way but Jesus is the word that they're talking about over here in 1 John 5:3 1 John 5:3 
And there, okay, I'm continuing on 1 John 5, 8. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath, hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us, eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. So it's just kind of simple. You know, we are either saved through Jesus or we're not. And if we are not, then we are missing out on the blessings of God because we're not in obedience with what God has called us to. He has called us to believe on his Son and to trust his Son, to accept his Son as our Savior. And so if we are not doing that, then we are not walking with God. We are not walking in obedience at all. Okay, so let's move on to Isaiah 53, which is a prophecy about Jesus. Isaiah 53, 1 through 12. We're just going to read all of it. Who hath believed our report and to and what it's what my Bible is titled is Christ's sufferings foretold. So this is talking about what Jesus, Jesus in obedience, is going to do for the whole entire world. Not just for me, for the whole entire world. For seven point five or eight billion, it depends on who you listen to. I don't know what the real statistic is, but you know what? God knows every one of us. God knows every one of our hearts, every one of our minds. He knows our thoughts. He knows everything. So I don't have to know how many people are on the earth. God does, and that's what matters. God knows who is going to accept his son and who is not. But the thing is, we do not know that. And that is why we share God's truths and we share God's the gospel of Jesus. So let's read what Jesus, in obedience, did for us. The, the cost, he paid it all. He paid it all on the cross. He took every one of our sins, every one of our shames, our past, our present, our future, all of it, of the whole entire world. He took all of that on himself in the crucifixion. It was painful. It was so painful. I don't know if you have ever watched the movie The Passion, but I can only watch it one time because it broke my heart to see what Jesus was willing to do for us to save us. Okay, well, let's, let's read a description. But if you need a visual, then watch The Passion. Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and, an acquaint and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carry our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, and have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, 
and as sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to, br to bruise him. He hath put him to grief, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. That is Jesus. That is what Jesus did for us. That is who Jesus is. Jesus did all this for us, for every one of us, not despairing anyone, not despairing the very people that crucified him. He died for them too. He died for everyone. That's powerful. And spiritually, I am sweating because as I was reading that, I have seen the passion. <laughs> so I have these vivid images in my mind of the beating that my Savior took for my sins and my shame. <sighs> and the visual of him being nailed to the cross in the man that played Jesus in the Passion, he was struck by lightning twice. His shoulder was dislocated. He had, he suffered too. <laughs> he suffered too playing the Savior. He suffered a lot. You know, it's an awesome movie. It really is. But I can only watch it one time because it is very bloody and it will touch your spirit in a way that you will never be the same after watching it. I can read this description, but when you watch it, you, you can't believe. When the song says, He paid it all, you will see that He paid it all. He paid every bit. Every bit. So Jesus, Jesus, was obedient to God unto death unto a horrible death oh here comes my child here comes my child alright I'm nearly through so you're just going to have to wait okay do you want to go back in there and watch TV until I get through alright I didn't think so okay so I got the Bible verses done I was actually going to do one more um, but I, I think I'm going to leave it at that. That was seven verses, so I think that's really good. So let me read my notes from today. And uh, I am going to start with where God started sharing things with me. I was just telling God that in order to do the things that he wants me to do, I'm going to need some things to make that work. And so he said, child, I will supply your needs. I see them and I have a plan for what you need. I see what you do for my kingdom. And even when it doesn't all work out, you don't quit. I don't. I'm obedient to not quitting. I don't care. 
Uh, sometimes our youth music flops. I don't care. I'm going to be obedient. Uh, you don't quit, but continue even in your personal embarrassment. I do because I, I am not a perfectionist, but I do like when things work out smoothly. Um, you are teaching the younger generations how to handle disappointment. I am. And embarrassment with grace. And not anger. I mean, I could get mad. I could slam around on the computer, but oh, that doesn't do any good. With patience and not intolerance. They see things in you that you do not see. They see the love and compassion of Jesus when you don't have the words to say, child, Keep working for my honor and my glory in all that you do. Walk in complete obedience to me. Last year, this was one of your words. It was one of my words. My words last year were confidence, trust, and obedience. Confidence in God, putting all my confidence in God, not myself. Um, trust trusting him with everything that i have in obedience being obedient no matter what and so those were my three words last year that were my focus words that i wanted to work on at i choose words in january and i work on them all year long and so this year my words are what are my words this year presence being more in the presence of god um Oh, I forgot, but it's right here on Facebook. <laughs> Can't believe I forgot. Presence, testifying, testifying of the good things that God has done in my life, and encouraging others. And so, today, I went to Chicken Express, yep, 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 yep. and I was in the drive through and the line was long. And I go, Seth, let's just go inside. Let's just go inside and eat. We don't go inside and eat very often. So we did. We just went inside and ate. And I ordered my food, and uh, she said it's going to be about nine minutes on the catfish. And I said, well, that's well worth the wait. And so I patiently waited for my food, and they brought it. I don't know whether it was nine minutes or not. I don't really care. I didn't have any place I had to be. So anyway, um, they brought it, and Seth and I sat there and ate, and I did this Facebook share while I was there. And um, while I was there, they were so busy, and they were working so well together as a team, and it was pleasant, and nobody was mad at anybody. No, there was no drama. It was just perfect. They were just in sync working together. And so before I left, I felt the Holy Spirit wanted me to encourage them. So I told the lady, I said, who is your supervisor? And she goes, well, he just walked out the door. And I go, well, I just want him to know that our experience today was so good and y'all worked so well together. And... Uh, I just wanted y'all to know that, that it was a pleasure to come in here and eat and not have to deal with drama and not have to deal with anything, just pleasantries. Everyone was pleasant. I said, so I will be back. You know, so people need to know that. People need to be encouraged other than discouraged. We need to find the good things that people are doing. I mean, everything was perfect there. I didn't have any complaints, but we need to find the good things that people are doing and encourage them uh, to continue to do well, to continue to work hard. You know, um, we need to tell them, Jesus loves you, and God sees all the hard work that you're doing, and Jesus loves you, and God has a plan and purpose for your life. There is not a lot of encouragement that's going on right now. So encouragement is something that I'm really going to work on. And I have started testifying. I have started giving more of my testimony. Well, that was testimony. <laughs> because it's the Holy Spirit that wanted me to go and tell him that. You know, and I was kind of thinking, I don't want to. But I did because I knew I was talking about walking in obedience tonight. So how am I going to come and talk to y'all about walking in obedience when I'm not walking in obedience? That's hypocrisy. 
if you're telling people that we need to do something and you're not willing to do it yourself, then that's being a hypocrite. So anyway, I just wanted to stop in my notes and talk about that. So um, so he said, last year this was one of your words, obedience, doing what I ask no matter what. Um, no matter what comes, I don't know, I have a hard, I struggle reading my own handwriting. Oh, no matter what, continue on that path, child. Rewards come with obedience, child. So be ready for rewards here and in heaven. And I believe that. We get rewards in heaven. We get rewards here, too. We get blessings here. If we are obedient, we get blessings. If we are disobedient to God, we usually get consequences. Not that our life is going to be totally perfect when we're being obedient. We're all going to go through things. We're all going to have tests and trials. And sometimes our obedience gets tested. You know, are you going to be obedient to me? Are you going to do what you're telling me that you're doing? Are you going to do what you tell people that you're doing? Are you going to do that? Or are you going to do the opposite? We get He tests us. He does. Um, your child needs help, and soon you will be busy again. Help her, and that's about my daughter. Help her, and it will help meet your needs also. And I said, thank you, God, for helping me to all of what you were saying. For helping me with all of what you were saying. Thank you for my freedom right now to get things done that I need to get done. Thank you for meeting me today and every day, too. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give my mama and daddy a hug. I love you too, my child. Now go and be obedient to me. You know, he tells me that every day. Go and be obedient to me in all that I ask. In all that I ask, child. The reunion is soon. Did you see my wander in the sky for all to see? That was last night. Did y'all see that blood moon? It was spectacular. It was, I've never seen one like it. And I've, I've seen a lot of the blood moons, but they were not impressive like last night's was. For all to see last night, more signs and wonders are coming, and you will see them. The reunion is soon, but not yet. Every day gets closer and closer, so be ready, child. Be ready. Keep sharing my truths in the gospel of Jesus and always walk in obedience to me. The marriage of the Lamb comes. Jesus is coming to get his bride. And I said, Maranatha, God. So I'm ready. Hey, my friend Josie. How are you doing? Did you have a good day today? My friend Josie is here. I miss my friend Josie when she doesn't come, but I know that she's busy. I totally understand. Okay, what kind of salvation message do we want to do tonight? What goes with obedience? Hmm. Let me see what this is. I don't know where my little cardboard thing is that goes with this. I've lost it. But I can show you this instead. I like that little cardboard thing though. But I've lost it on my desk. Does anybody ever lose things on their desk? I do all the time. Okay. So we'll just use this tonight. Because I don't know where it is. Okay. Well, this is the first part of this. I have to cover up my face. <laughs> so they can see it in YouTube. YouTube feel. Okay. All right, so our sin separates us from God. And we talked about that tonight, that sin does separate us from God. The light on the right 
represents God. God is perfect, holy, and loving and has provided a way for salvation. In contrast, the man in darkness represents man in his sin, separated from God. Sin is more than wrong thoughts and actions, but a heart that is inclined towards evil. Uh, Jeremiah 17, 9, the Bible says, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 23, um, apart from God's grace, man is without hope. And so, wow, I'm already getting confirmation about what God wanted me to talk about. Jesus paid the debt for our sin. I said tonight, Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all for every one of us, not leaving anyone out. The cross is a picture of God's grace. God sent his own son, Jesus, to earth. As a man, Jesus died on the cross for us so that he might take away our sins. 1 John 3, 5. Did we read that tonight? We read two 1 Johns. No, three twenty four. The Bible says God demonstrates his own love for us in this while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. Jesus took away our sin in his own body on the cross so that he could bring us to God. Seth, what are you doing over there? Get away from there. Get away. Thank you. The Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16 There is nothing we can do on our own to pay the penalty for our sin. If we could, then God would not have sent his son to die for us. Only the blood of Jesus can wash away our sin. Okay. So that is Jesus on the cross. Maybe I'll just do it in, in pictures. Okay, so then we have Jesus died. They took him down from the cross. And this is a picture of him in the tomb. After Jesus died, men buried him in a tomb, sealed with a huge stone, and guarded by soldiers. And so then, after three days, Jesus arose. Jesus rose again. Jesus is risen. Three days later, God raised Jesus from the dead, declaring that he truly is the Son of God. And that God was satisfied with his payment for sin. Jesus then appeared to many people before returning to his Father in heaven. So this is Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. The only way we can come to God is through faith in Jesus Christ. Only Jesus has paid the penalty. God demands for our sin. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, John 14, 6. But just knowing these facts does not ensure salvation. We must respond to God's grace by trusting in Jesus Christ alone as the only one who can forgive our sin and give us God's gift of eternal life. Okay. So the next picture is trust only in Jesus. You know, Jesus is the only way to heaven. There is no other way. There is no one else that is going to usher you into heaven but Jesus. Trust only in Jesus. The penalty for sin is eternal separation from God. But Jesus offers you the free gift of eternal life with God. You need to accept this gift God offers. The way we demonstrate our faith in Jesus Christ is by trusting in Him alone for complete payment of our sin. The Bible says that our sin is removed through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe, Romans 3.22. Are you trusting in Jesus for your salvation? So the next part says, you can. You can trust Jesus as your sal sal for your salvation. The Bible says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord 
and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9, if you are trusting in Christ for your salvation, tell God by praying something like this. You know, again, I say this a lot, the prayer is not what saves you, it's the belief. I believe in Jesus. I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe that Jesus died. I believe that Jesus rose again. I believe that Jesus is with God now on the right hand side. Jesus, would you please come into my heart and save my soul? You know, you can use whatever words you want, but this is a prayer, and if you want, you can repeat after it. Dear God, thank you for loving me. I confess that I have sinned against you. I confess that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sin and that you raised him from the dead. I trust Jesus alone to forgive me and take away all my sins. I confess that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So remember again, it's not the words of a prayer that save you. God saves you when you respond in faith to his grace. If you trusted in Jesus today, Jesus promises you in, ten, in John 10, 27, 28. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I will give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. Okay, so here's some more little pictures. Because you were saved by the precious blood of Christ, you, sh you should follow God and learn to please Him. This, this is obedience. This is being obedient. Here are some of His requirements for you to grow spiritually. Well, we talked about loving God and loving people. So that's what the heart says. The heart says, love God and love people. You shall love the, the Lord God with all your heart, soul, mind, this is the great and foremost commandment. And second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew twenty-two thirty-six through 40. And so then we have the little praying man. Pray. Pray to God constantly. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. And then study God's Word. Read God's Word. Read God's Word. There are so many things in there that you need to know to be a, st a strong Christian. So read God's Word daily. Start with the Gospel of John and read one chapter each day. Like newborn babes long for the pure milk of the Word, that by it you may grow in respect to salvation. 1 Peter 2.2 2. And then we have the little fellowship hands, the little handshaking, okay? Meet regularly with other Christians, not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, Hebrews 10.25. And then we have, we have the world with a cross in the center of it. Tell other people about Jesus. And he, Jesus, said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. So, if you got saved tonight by listening to this and saying this prayer, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And the angels are rejoicing because the angels rejoice when one soul is saved. 
And so you are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus, his one and only Son. Okay, well, it is time to do a blessing. I got to go see what my child wants. I haven't fed him dinner yet. I haven't eaten dinner yet. I'm going to go eat something. I don't know what I'm going to eat. I am not doing good about with my intermediate my in, intermittent fasting right now so I got to get back on that um, I think I'm just gonna wait until Monday and do that or maybe Sunday okay this is number 6 24 through 26 the Lord bless thee and keep thee the Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Ah, maybe when Jesus comes, I'll have that memorized. And that will be good. Alright. So, if Josie is still here, do you have any prayer requests, Josie? Are you feeling better? Josie has been sick. I've been praying for you, Josie. Are you feeling better? She might have... Uh, had to step away. I'll continue to pray for her. And we need to pray for the lost. And like we talked about, even as Christians, we need to be obedient to God. It needs to just not be words. Oh, we're Christians. It needs to be, people need to see our actions. Our actions and our words need to match. When your actions and your words don't match, then that is being a hypocrite. You're saying that you're one thing, but yet you're not doing it. So that is being a hypocrite. I see that a lot in our leadership. Their words sound really good, but their actions don't match. And so their actions are not good for us. Their words sound great, but their actions don't match. And so that is not being obedient to God. Oh, you're still coughing and you have congestion. I'm sorry. Do you feel any better? You know, I've been taking a multivitamin. And I used to do that when I had really bad allergies. I would take a multivitamin and I would notice that I did not get allergies as much. I did not get the bad flare-ups as much when I would take a multivitamin. So maybe get you a multivitamin and see if that would help. See if maybe you're missing something in your diet. Anyway, Seth and I have been taking a multivitamin for like two weeks now. You're tired and sleepy? Yeah, probably from the medicine and from being congested and not being able to sleep at night. I'm always so congested when I can't sleep at night. I mean, I'm sleepy the next day because I'm worn out because I'm not getting rest. So I will pray that you will get better. I was hoping that you were better by now. Because you sounded really sick the last time I talked to you on the phone. Well, is there anybody else? Is anybody else sick besides you, Josie? I'm going to go ahead and pray, and I will check and see if she types something in there. God, I just want to lift up my sister to you, Josie, tonight, God, and just heal her body. Just help her to feel better, God, and just give her rest. Give her rest from the coughing. I know so many times I've been so sick, and what would just make me feel so bad the next day is that I hadn't had any good rest the night before because I had been up coughing all night, God, and if that's what Josie is going through. Then, God, just please uh, help her to have a restful night. And uh, if anyone else is sick with this, God, we just pray that you would heal their bodies also. 
and we just pray God that um, you would just help us to be obedient to you it's it's so tempting even tonight I was talking to my friend Janet and I was just like I don't want to do this tonight and you know it's a fight it's a fight when we are when you're calling us to be obedient it is a fight and it's not a fight on your side we know where we know where the uh, blame lays but God I laughingly told her how can I be disobedient when I'm talking about walking in obedience so just help us to be more obedient God to do everything that you tell us even if it's embarrassing even if it makes absolutely no sense and just not to question you just to be obedient to you do everything that you ask us to do God and willingly and with a good attitude God just like today I really didn't want to do that at Chicken Express but you asked me to do it and uh, it was received very well it put smiles on those workers faces and that's good because they probably don't get much encouragement from customers they probably get more complaints God so help me to be the one that goes in and encourages people that are working for the public because I know personally from working for the public for so many years that people rarely tell you good things they just want to complain but God help us to be the hands and feet of Jesus and to be different and to be encouragers and to testify of the things the good things that you do in our lives God because there are so many there are so many things that I could share that you have done God and help us to be more in your presence every day help us to be uh, faithful at being in your word at reading your word and communicating to you through prayer and also praise God praising your name praising the name of Jesus praising the name of the Holy Spirit God just praising all of you which are one one perfect God and uh, we are thankful that you are on your throne and you are in control God and that we can trust you with everything that we have and that you are faithful God God I just pray that you would give Josie protection as she goes to work tomorrow that you would provide for her and that you would bless her God for her obedience to you and that God you would uh, be with her family members God her sisters and their family her brothers and their families her children and her grandchildren God be with them give them blessings and protection and provision and if any of them need Jesus as your Savior God please draw them allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus for salvation we pray for all the lost God we just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus and God we pray for all the people that have lost loved ones lately there has been so much loss God and it's just like if I know where they are I can't help but be happy for them but for the families God it's a very sad time so please give them peace comfort and strength let them feel your presence in the absence of their loved one and in Jesus name we pray amen the boys and my son and Mr. Mike is better okay so they're better so thank you God that the boys and Austin and Mr. Mike are better but just please let Josie get better please heal her body help her to get rest because I know that's so important and in Jesus name we pray amen well I know I've had maybe not what you've had but I've had the allergy crud before where you're just coughing all night it's just that mucus is so itchy you just you just have to cough so do you have any cough drops because sometimes cough drops help me if I can just keep a cough drop in my mouth all the time it will help 
But like I said, I've been taking multivitamins and there's a lot of stuff out there right now because we have all the flowers and the trees and all the stuff. Plus we have mold on the trees too because of all the rain that we've had. And this is wood. No, I'm just going to pray. I'm just going to pray to God that I don't get an allergy um, attack. I do get up every morning and I have a lot of pressure on my head and I think that's part of it but I take Zyrtec every day too and I take a multivitamin so maybe when you get well maybe try taking a multivitamin every day because it's good for you anyway because it when we get older we don't get all the nutrients that we need all right my friend I love you but I am gonna go I have been obedient. <laughs> I've been obedient to all letters today, except I didn't get stuff done in my office today, but I did take Seth for lunch, and that was kind of fun. That was kind of fun. We haven't gone to lunch in a long time, just us. He is still coughing a lot. Get you some Hall's Cough Drops with honey. Those are the ones I like. I like the ones with honey that have the the stuff, the vapor that helps you breathe better. I like those. That's what I take a lot when I'm congested. Okay, well, I'm going to continue praying that you get well and um, have an awesome rest of your night, Josie, and every anybody else that comes and watches this, and have an awesome tomorrow, which is Friday. And there's a holiday Monday, so maybe a long weekend for people so much love much love and cyber hugs till I see you again good night